everyone and welcome i am chaitanya if you're new here you're watching chai with chaitanya this is a place where i talk about books movies and fandom so today i'm here and not in front of my bookshelf that is because you know i am not going to be talking about a particular book but instead i'm going to take you through my uh, process of how i set up my flat lays and how i take my bookstagram photos so um, i have had a couple of people here and there every you know every couple of months or sometimes even in weeks when people uh, reach out to me and they ask me that how do i usually set up my books or what props do i use how do i balance the color what apps do i use for editing so there are naturally a lot of questions because not everybody is a pro i definitely wasn't a pro so i can understand all of these questions are very valid and for somebody who is wanting to start bookstagramming or just wants to you know upscale their photography skills then uh, this video is definitely for you and this isn't the uh, you know the the manual to how to click bookstagram photos but this is just my way and uh, in this video throughout i will give you some tidbits and insights that i usually keep in mind while clicking my photographs uh, feel free to use uh, whichever ones that you like or you know pick and choose and uh, create something completely of your own let's go ahead and start this video but before that i do hope that you have subscribed to my channel uh, it really helps me and uh, it really motivates me to keep putting out these videos and it and it makes me feel that somebody is out there who's really watching this um, so i hope you have done that and let's go ahead <laughs> Okay, so if you're here, so that definitely means that you want to uh, either start Bookstagram or you have already been on Bookstagram and you want to improve or, you know, you're looking for a new theme or you just want to, you know, you're just curious about how am I taking these pictures that I usually take and you can see my pictures, uh, you know, my profile here on my, uh, on the screen. And um, the honest answer is that, you know, as I said earlier, it's not something that I was born with and it was definitely not something that I learned in like a day or two. It was a continuous process and I think it took me three months to actually come and finalize one theme for my for my bookstagram personally that the one that you guys see uh, at present the one that uh, my account is following. So now with bookstagram you have to understand that you know there are different ways you can do it. Essentially bookstagram is just you know if, if you tone it down it's books and instagram so you're posting about books on instagram which is how the you know the term bookstagram you know coined in so uh, there are different ways people do it some people have uh, you know they have themes which are based on colors like some people have it as uh, you know white they have a very uh, prominent white in their feed some people have black some people have yellow some people have orange and some of the examples that you can see for all the ones that i've mentioned are here on the screen uh, which would be visible which i'll be adding later in the editing process so sorry if it's not synced properly um next thing would be that you know so that's based on color the next uh, way of doing it bookstagram is to base it on theme so if you look at my bookstagram i wanted to go with something which is uh, a little bit magical it has a little bit of uh, touch of uh, you know nature or forest which is why you see a lot of uh, flowers or leaves or wooden objects in my um, in my bookstagram pictures uh, then definitely there are other ways also there are people who have very dark instagram where everything you know is, is very black and again you can have like a mix up of two like you can do color and theme and then you know put to put that together band it together which is fine and uh, then finally you also have something called not following any themes so these are basically bookstagrams which are very colorful you know they, they don't really care about themes a lot they post whatever you know they feel like and uh, they, you know their pictures can be very different from one another uh, then there are people who also use a different backgrounds for different pictures like for example one photo is in front of uh, like this the one that you have in front of you then uh, you have this one then uh, you have this account so you know so there are different ways of doing it and by the way all the uh, accounts uh, would be down in the description box below the ones that were featured here so you guys can go ahead and check their uh, profiles out so there are different ways of doing it and you as a bookstagrammer have the liberty to choose whichever one that you like but please note that uh, you know when we start out bookstagramming we feel that we need to uh, 
sort of you know have a certain theme and look in a certain way which sometimes when we start out it doesn't really end the, the way that we want to at least it did not do for me and most of the people that I've spoken to you know they've grown over the years or over at least some period of time so feel free to have that and don't get discouraged by it so uh, this is just the basics of what bookstagram can look like now quickly going in and talking about what I keep in mind when I am clicking my bookstagram photos now the first thing is your lighting now right now now uh, for shooting this video I'm using a ring light but if you ask me that whether do I use my ring light for my bookstagram photos or not then the quick and the simple answer is no I do not the uh, lighting that I mainly use for my bookstagram is the natural sunlight and uh, by default my house is not located in a place where I have like you know in a way that I have ample sunlight inside of my room so I have to be re really careful about when I'm shooting so usually I shoot my bookstagram photos around uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, in that in that bracket of time and uh, because uh, my room does not have the direct sunlight which is why even though the sun shines really bright during this hour it doesn't really hamper my uh, my process of taking the photos but if you live in a place where you have direct sunlight coming into your house then be sure to click photos only in the golden hours or uh, you know that is in the morning or that is in the evening time right before the sunset uh, and be sure to uh, you know to, to play around with the brightness that that is coming in so that's very important and the reason why I would prefer uh, you guys to use uh, sunlight natural light is because the sunlight has this in inherent and innate capacity to bring this whole magical charm into your uh, into your bookstagram photos which no ring light no amount of light can bring at least not in my opinion so um, so yes there are times when you know when I have to shoot something and the lighting is bad and the sunlight is not really helping me so there are times when I have also used ring lights but if you uh, look at the photograph like let's say if you look at this picture so this was taken in uh, you know under direct sunlight and obviously this photo is edited I'm not, I, I do not I no longer have the raw photo but uh, this was taken uh, under direct sunlight and then um, this one so this one was taken uh, with the help of the ring light. So you can actually see a little bit of difference. So, uh, it's always best and advised to use sunlight. And uh, if you cannot, then yes, ring lights are great. You can always invest in them. Now, yes, so the first thing uh, which was the lighting is now done. So the second thing that I really keep in mind is the texture. Now, the texture comes into place with, with two perspectives. That is one, you have to first figure out that what is the background that you'll be using. And second, what will be the angle of your picture. Now both these uh, things sort of work together hand in hand because let's say uh, if you look at my bookstagram you would see that I mainly do flat lays. I do not keep my book perpendicular like at a 90 degree and I do not take a shot like this but usually I have my book here and then the camera is usually placed here and that is how my pictures are taken. Now you can and you are free to go ahead and choose whichever way you want to take pictures. There is no right, no wrong way. I personally uh, feel that the uh, you know that the arranging the flat lays is more easier for me, so I do the flat lays. But if you're somebody who wants to you know add that volume into your volume and depth into your pictures, which obviously cannot happen in a flat lay, so you can obviously take uh, the picture in a different angle. But for that, then again, you'll have to figure out what will be your background. So in case of a flat lay our background is the one that is you know behind the book and all the props that you're keeping that is your background which is usually laid down on a surface and uh, if you're taking it from a different angle then you have to not only be careful about your background which is here which is uh, you know which is on the flat surface but also which is on this side you know whichever side your camera is so the you know the behind side so you have to also make sure that what are you using over there so I personally also use just the simple bedding that is there and I actually wanted to show you guys so this is the uh, you know the cloth that I use so this is basically uh, my sister's uh, you know blanket I hope you guys can see it has snow white on it and the back side is is completely white so what I do is I flip this around and lay it on my bed and that's just how I take my pictures now as you can see uh, this cloth you know it is uh, one second yeah yeah oh it went dark sorry uh, yeah so as you can see here you know te te the texture of this cloth is very flat there isn't any texture this is very smooth very flat 
So what I do is I, I like to add some amount of texture in my picture. So again, this is my sister's, um, I don't know what this is called. I think it's called, um, I'm not sure, very bad with uh, figuring out the names of the product. So this has this very beautiful texture on it, as you guys can see, I hopefully you guys can see. And I, what I do is so I lay out uh, this and then on top of it, I put this and then I have my books. So this is just how I uh, do the texturing. But again, you guys can feel free to try out different stuff. Okay, so now that we have already covered uh, the lighting, texture, camera angle, and uh, the background. So I think it's important to also co quickly cover uh, another aspect that comes in camera angle and you know related to your texture and layering and that is your framing. Now framing uh, of your uh, of the picture that you're going to take is very important and it's very crucial. Now there can be different ways in which you use your frame uh, but the first thing to notice is that your Instagram usually allows you to put pictures in three types if you have noticed one is exactly a square I, i'm very bad with resolutions you can always go ahead and google uh, so but you know in general in layman's term if you go and see you would see that one is the square option uh, and if you have a you know if you have a picture which is in the portrait portrait mode then uh, what it does is you also have an option on the corner where you you can choose not to shrink the photo in a square so you can upload the photo in the portrait mode like in the landscape mode uh, sorry in yeah in the portrait mode not, not in the landscape mode and then finally you also have an option where you can upload like let's say if you have a picture which you took in the landscape mode and it's the scenery so you also have an option to put that just as a scenery and not shrink to the square but my personal opinion when it comes to framing my bookstagram photos is is and has always been and probably will always be to use the square format and the reason why i choose and prefer the square format over the portrait and the landscape format is because your instagram when you look at your instagram and when uh, you know as, a, as a overall for example over here this is the way i'm talking about so you can see that the pictures if they are in square they appear to be you know the, the, the picture doesn't get cut on the or cropped on the edges right when i want to look at my bookstagram i look at the overall aesthetics as well so uh, i click most of my pictures in the square format uh, in my iphone i use an iphone 7 so in my iphone 7 there you know in the camera option i have the square framing so i use that and I think even if you're using Android or, uh, you know, Blackberry or whatever phone that you're using, or even if you're using like a proper DSLR camera, I think that 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 mode should exist. Uh, I'm not sure, but hopefully it should be there. Uh, like just do a quick Google check or YouTube check and, you know, figure out for your um, camera, your phone. But I would suggest that you take it in squares because I, I personally think that squares look more better. Uh, the next thing that you have to look about framing is that where exactly is your book staying in the picture? Now, some people, uh, you know, have one picture, one book in their picture. Some people have two books. For example, if you look at my pictures that I've taken here, you can see I have only one book, which is in the center. Then if you see here, um, I have got two books. Then if you look at here, then I have got more than, you know, two books. In fact, it's, it's a proper stack of books. So again, different people like putting it in different ways. Now you have to always be careful while framing that how would your overall appeal look? So I think that every single one of us has a sense of aesthetic, you know, somebody has little more than you, somebody has a little less than you, but we all have that sense of aesthetic and because we all are such unique beings, I think, uh, you know, each of our aesthetic sense are very varied. Always make sure that you have the grid option in your camera, whether it is your phone camera or your DSLR, that it's switched on because your grid, you know, the, the, the I think it's a three by three grid. So the three by three grid usually helps you to figure out that where will the you know where will the object come in and now finally the most important aspect of bookstagram photos that is your props to the basics of what you need to uh, choose and how you need to uh, ensure that what props would you want to pick up now first of all get this get over with this idea that you need to invest okay uh, yes, there is an investment if you want to make an investment, but uh, in most cases your investment wouldn't be 
you know a lot like you wouldn't be spending thousands and thousands of bucks on your uh, you know on your props it's relatively cheap you just need to know where to find them and what to find now where and uh, before we come to the where part we need to figure out what to find okay and what to find would again be determined by what theme you're using and uh, what color uh, you know tone that you're giving your uh, bookstagram and what kind of texture you're going with for example if you want to go with a dark theme which has more black in it you naturally cannot use objects which are colorful like you cannot use yellow and red and you know green because these colors naturally will not suit with your overall appeal and overall feel of the um, you know of your of your profile so in that case you have to be a little particular about what products to use and what props not to use sorry not products props there is a fair share of uh, you know white slash brown slash uh, golden in my feed the golden isn't highlighted much but it's still there if you can figure it out so um so okay so the first prop that i want you guys to see are these uh, you know old papers Uh, I'm sorry, my lighting is a little bad. I hope you guys can see. So basically, these papers are actually plucked out from uh, this book, which actually belonged to my dad. But he had already, over the years, lost a couple of pages from them, and he no longer wanted to read this book. So I thought, why not just take out the pages because it is really very old. So I did not really spend anything on this, right? So it it was actually free of cost. Now the next thing I want you guys to see is I actually have too many things so I'm I'm getting a little uh, confused which one to show you first but I have this now what is this uh, this is basically a scroll okay and uh, you would know that fantasy uh, readers would know that scrolls are so important and I think when you have a fantasy sort of theme then scrolls are one of the most important things that you can have. So how did I make this scroll? So I did nothing. I took my newspaper that comes to my home. I washed it like you know I just went into the washroom. I poured a glass of water on it and I wetted the entire newspaper. Then I al allowed it to dry down and I uh, like after it was dried down to a fair extent like let's say after 15 minutes I took it up. I brought it into my room. I used an iron to press it and after that I what I did was I took a matchbox and I lighted the uh, you know a candle. and i started you know keeping the uh, newspaper at different positions to burn off the edges and to give this uh, you know to give this vintage look to it so that it it looks and feels that it's very old now two things first uh, when you're working with your press and when you're working with a matchbox slash candle or any sort of thing which is flammable please be very careful uh, <laughs> i don't want you to try something which i say and then end up uh, you know creating some sort of a mess so please 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 be be careful when you're using these things um so yeah so i uh, used that and then after it was done i simply rolled it into uh, you know into a like how we normally roll so that it it becomes like a scroll and then i used this jute rope which is very readily available and it's very 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 inexpensive so just take that uh, rope and then tie it and you know you have a prop so you actually don't really have to spend uh, a lot of money now the next thing that i want you guys to see is um, is this that is again i hope that you guys can see that is the um, so saucer i think it's called a saucer i'm sorry i'm very bad with names and the and the cup now again this is a very 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 old um, sorry i had to show you guys the cup now again this was a very old um, cup and saucer which my parents no longer used i like uh, the fact that it's absolutely white and it has this slight golden tinge to it so that actually went when i said that my bookstagram does have slight bit of golden but it's not very prominent i meant this and there are obviously other examples as well so this uh, went with my uh, with my feed and cup and saucer are are a part of every household i think you'll find them in each uh, kitchen so just go into your mom's kitchen and make sure that you first take her permission or you know whoever is the uh, you know head of your family and needs and is very particular about their crock you need to take that permission and then be careful how you're handling them uh next thing that i want you guys to see is oh wait this is a bot items i'll show you this later i'll show you this first i'm sorry for being so disorganized um i want to show you this so this is basically a bouquet that came in for my birthday and um and i have always felt that you know bouquets are the most uh 
most useless pro, uh, you know gift that somebody can give like this is what i used to feel because you know these are just flowers after a point of time they just you know dry away and you have to throw them eventually but after i joined bookstagram i increasingly realized the importance of having dried flowers in your home so this was a pink rose bouquet that came in and um after it came in uh, what i did was um i took the bouquet i hung it in in one of the hangers that we have uh, you know the, the one that we use it for our clothes and i hung the bouquet upside down and i put it inside my wardrobe for 2 weeks straight and the wardrobe was absolutely dark and i did not take this uh, you know the, these this bunch of flowers out now why did i do this uh, so the thing is that if you put it in a dark room you can retain some amount of color in the uh, you know in the flowers because what happens once uh, the um, the drying of the flower starts the pigmentation that is there it sort of also stops or it sort of withdraws i'm not sure i'm not a biologist and i have no clue I am not an expert but this is just what I read on the internet and I actually tried and it actually worked. So uh so it starts dying out so which is why you need to hang it upside down so that you know the uh, whatever pigmentation is there it doesn't wither away and it's in a dark space so there's no exposure to sunlight or there's no light at all for it to you know to 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 lose its color. So you can see it has retained its color this this dried flower came to me almost uh 2 months ago now and um I'm still using it and it's quite fine and it it always stays on my desk over here. So, yes. Now, next thing that I wanted to show you which is also free of cost, you know, you don't need to really spend a lot, uh is this bottle, okay? Uh, the bottle is actually from Caventers. I don't know if you guys can see here or not. Caventers is this very popular milkshake brand here in India. um i think it's an mnc definitely but yes you you get the drill right so it's so the bottle is always transparent and again this rope this jute rope as i mentioned it's very cheap very inexpensive so you just i i bought that and i tied it all around it over here and over here and i kept this part transparent so that you know it it you have that feel to it i can wrap it completely that will make it look even more rigid and it will give even more texture but i wanted and preferred it this way so yes so that sort of you know tells you that there are so many things that you can actually consider and you don't really have to you know like actually invest in it and as i already mentioned apples over here and uh, you can use lessons which is garlic and onions like this so uh, your kitchen is a best place to start looking for your items now i will be making a detailed video covering all the props that i've bought from uh, outside like you know the props that i've actually invested in and uh, that video will contain only props and list of props and where to find them where to buy them so be sure to wait for that video and now i will actually quickly go ahead and show you a simple setup that um, that i will take up for my bookstagram and show you guys that how i do it so as promised i will be setting up uh, the bookstagram photo flat lay that i do for this book it's an arc that i received from harper collins and this is a middle grade book by this a new author called kyle arivera and i really enjoyed this book um so i'm going to quickly go ahead and show you guys how i do the setup here this is my bed uh, you can see the window there and uh, i will try and not have um the time lapse uh, mode on because when the time lapse is on it's usually very difficult uh to you know to tell you guys that how the setup is happening and i hope that this framing is all right i can't do anything better than this uh so we'll have to adjust um so as i said you know i laid down my my background and we because i do flat lays and this is the texture cloth which i showed yesterday so we lay this down as well then we just put in the book anywhere for now and then i will take my box which i use at all times for my uh bookstagram purposes and it has a lot of stuff it has other pro props as well which i did not show you guys in this video because i will be covering them in details in the other video but for this book i want to do something which is closer to fantasy because this is a middle grade fantasy novel and it's set in the sand so i i was wishing to do something which has a touch of brown to it 
so you know I'm just like laying out uh, the pages that I have here in whatever way that I want to and these are uh, pine cones a uh, dried pine cones as you can see here so I'm just gonna you know lay them down here and then maybe I can put this here now the thing with bookstagram photos and you know doing flat lays is that there is no set right way like nobody can tell you which layout would look nice so you have to always try different types like you know different arrangements and see what is working uh, often you know there are days when I cannot take any photo there are days when I have uh, you know I, I take out all my stuff you know put it out all on my on my bed sheet and my mom is always behind my back that you know you're I'm making the entire room dirty but then um, you know it, it, it's, it's bound to get dirty so um, so yeah so there are days when you will not be able to take photos so on those days you should just let yourself uh, you know uh, not take bookstagram photos and not waste your time uh, maybe that's not your day for <laughs> for taking these pictures and that's okay so um, don't force yourself if you are not being able to take uh, the photo or if you're not being able to do the setup in the right way on a certain day but you have to keep trying you have to keep uh, coming back and you know try out different ways and different things with whatever you have in different uh, you know ways and see uh, when it clicks the moment it would click and trust me it would yes so I was saying that there are days when it will work out and there are days when it will not work out but on every single day when you are out and trying to click bookstagram photos be sure to have an open mind and be sure to tell yourself that it's okay if you don't get it right in the first attempt or even in the second attempt or even after 50 attempts because uh, it's it's a lot of trial and error method in the way this whole thing works so you're bound to you know take a little while and uh, no matter which bookstagrammer you follow no matter which bookstagrammer inspires you their feed is brilliantly amazing they all have such days even if they do not accept it uh, on the camera or in front of everyone but all of us face this and uh, it's very normal so if you are facing something of this sort you know don't get bothered or boggled down with it and think that you know you can't do it that it requires something which is very difficult because it is nothing so now I've set it up the uh, entire uh, you know setup so and then sorry for the jerk and this is how you know the setup looks so far and uh, I since I have only one camera I'll have to screen record uh, the moment when I click it but uh, as you can see you know this is how it looks now you can take it from this angle you can take it from this angle or you know the way I take it I usually do the flat lay so this is how it will look but obviously this is the rectangle format I take it in the square uh, framing this is what it is and I don't think that this is very difficult this is very easy and uh, if you think that I was able to do this super quickly because I have a lot of uh, experience and yes that's true once you start doing it you'll realize that you can you know make anything out of scratch so I will quickly open my camera and then I will move on to the square framing and I will see which angle looks the best for me it's the top lay the flat lay and I will take my picture and that's it then I will go to Lightroom which is the app that I use for all my editing and I have a preset which is already determined so I will just open the photo that I took I will go back to a previous photo that I have on which the preset is already set I will simply copy the setting of the preset then go to my today's photo and then paste the preset and then you can see the photo that I took has got the feel and touch uh, of my feed I will save it and then go to Instagram and then adjust it in the frame again and then I will just simply click next and we are officially done so you see 
it's not really that difficult this brings us to the end of this video and i do hope that this uh, flat lay setup was helpful and i also thought that there's no point of me just showing you how i set up my flat lay if i actually did not give you any context that is if i did not tell you how to start bookstagramming or if you have already started then how to go about uh, you know following the basic protocols and having certain key things in your mind uh, again please note that this isn't the only way there are various other methods and various other ways that you can try out feel free to pick and choose as i also said earlier in this video uh, if you did like this and if you did find this video useful then do share this with your friends and do consider giving this video a thumbs up because that would help me and motivate me to keep putting out more of these videos uh, if you have not subscribed then please consider that if you like this content again and if you have any specific questions regarding bookstagramming or if you have any specific questions regarding how i take my photos then again uh, you know feel free to drop that down in the comment section i will uh, love to get back to you on that in the comment section or if i will consider making another video for it um, also uh, if you have started your bookstagram recently or if you you know or if you if you took help from this video and if you uh, made some changes then feel free to uh, you know drop down the links i would love to see what you are doing and i would love to follow you and drop a hi and we can take it from there also one quick thing in the uh, video uh, it, the first part of this video when i shot i was actually looking at myself in the camera and instead of looking in at the camera hole so which is why my uh, you know my eye my eyes were not looking directly at you but it was a little off so now that i've realized this this will not happen so yes that's about it and i will see you very soon with another video about bookstagramming and how to take photos and editing and whatnot so till then see you and bye